All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third session of Star Trek Bastet. If this is your first time tuning in, uh, we are a Star Trek Adventures actual play series that is set aboard a time, uh, well, I was going to say time tested, but a basically Prometheus class out of time uh, trying to get home type of scenario. Uh, don't worry if you can't stick around for the full session or if you missed the first two episodes. Um, the VOD and audio-only versions are available on YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. But I'm still going to do my best that, like, hey, if this is your first episode, um, you know, I'm going to do my best to make sure you can enjoy it as well. Uh, in terms of announcements this week, uh, I don't really have much. So let's just actually go around and have everyone introduce themselves. And I thought we'd actually start from the bottom up this time. So, Matt, if you'd take it away. You've just disrupted everything. You've thrown everything off. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, everyone. My name is Matthew. I play uh, Lieutenant Thavarin, who is a Benzite who was raised on Andoria. Very nice. Hello, hello everyone. My name is Dare Wolf. Uh, I am playing, playing Lieutenant Kalos Cater, a uh, Betazoid doctor and the uh, promoter of Captain Kitty. I am Brian. I play Lieutenant Baylor Droxine, Lieutenant Junior Grade Baylor Droxine. Um, I'm at Mind Over Brian on Twitter and on Twitch, although on Twitch I am spell it with a zero. Uh, and I'm very excited today. Hello, everyone. My name is Nikel, and I play Lieutenant Alexio, who is a Cameloid shapeshifter. Hello, everyone. My name is Alex, and I am playing Lieutenant Abbasi, the ship's acting captain and if you don't know me by now i'm elh the game master and uh, let's go ahead and run our quick little introductory video All right, and welcome back. So something I like doing for all my Star Trek games is have the players do an opening log. And uh, Mr. Droxine, I believe you have that today. <clears throat> Field log, relative start date 51825.9. Lieutenant Droxine reporting. It's been three days since the temporal event, which launched a skeleton crewed Bastet into the past. With Commander Marlowe still in stasis, the chief medical officer's rather impromptu field commissioning of Lieutenant Abbasi to captain has stood. Despite my efforts to legitimize his command by having it confirmed by the acclaim of his crew, the captain still remains tentative, hesitant, as anyone on this junior crew would be, I imagine, myself included, I'm sure. But to, to make matters worse, his hesitancy has resulted in officers taking actions on behalf of the ship without being ordered or even informing the bridge crew and captain what they're doing. I even found myself tempted when, in a crucial moment, it seemed I might be able to return us to our time by seizing an opportunity. But a good officer only offers his captain options and lets them choose what's best. The crew now finds themselves so close to home we can taste it. We're a relative hair's breadth away from our own time, which is exactly our problem. We've landed in our own past, or more exactly, my past, or a version of it. We've landed behind enemy lines during the Dominion War, a war I'm familiar with as I began my service during it. And just as I was warning the captain that we'd need to avoid her, there she was, the USS Raziel, big as life and on the view screen. Exactly where she shouldn't be, since I checked my logs and a handsome young Ensign Droxine is at her helm in this date, we never crossed the border, uh, nor faced two Jem'Hadar battlecruisers at once, alone. I've got a bad feeling I'm going to be on the wrong side of a temporal tribunal if we ever get home. All right. So uh, we're going to open up today's session by actually immediately going to the map because uh, I have a little things to explain about the situation that's going on outside. So it seems that dynamic lighting is working. Let's hope that continues to be the case. So uh, what we have here is basically a large battle map. 
And uh, it's sort of in that middle there, you see the Norway class, the USS Rezeal. Uh, it is under assault by uh, two Jem'Hadar battleships. Um, sort of in this area, there are roving asteroid belts and micro nebulas, uh, which you can kind of see even through the dynamic lighting. And uh, the Bastet is under cloak at the moment. Um, but what I would remind you is that the Jem'Hadar can very easily see, quote-unquote, modern cloaks. So your old TOS-era cloak, probably very easy to spot. Um, but what you're noticing is that right now the Raziel is currently engaged within uh, evasive maneuvers, but based on what you know of Jem'Hadar battleships, um, this isn't a fight that you're going to be able to win, at least not easily. But uh, as this is all going on, uh, now that you sort of see what the map looks like, let's go to the bridge of the Bastet. And uh, basically everything I just said is explained by uh, Lieutenant Mir. And Mir says, um, Captain, I, if I may make a recommendation, uh, we might want to either draw the attention away from the Raziel, or... I... Honestly, I don't know. I, what happens if... I, you know, what if Droxine dies out there? Does does he stop existing for us? I don't know the implications, but I do agree. We need to try and draw their attention away. Drop us out of cloak. Shields up red alert. Alright. That means I get to hit this button. So, uh, as the cloak is disengaged and uh, you more or less go to red alert mode, uh, I have a very important question. Um, specifically, do you hail the Raziel or do you remain calm silent? I'm going to order that we remain calm silent. Okay. So in that case, uh, Lieutenant Relore, uh is going to report, uh, Sir, just to let you know they are trying to hail us. They're very confused. Send a reply that our communication systems are currently damaged. If we get them up and running, we will reply. Sorry, sir. I'm just trying to type that out in a way that makes sense. You know, it's it's kind of hard to do the static effect when, you know, it's, it's text, but I'm doing my best. Uh, visual and audio are down. Mm, that works. And uh, she touches a button and says, oh, well, I don't know if uh, Mr. Cater over there is feeling it too, but um, the captain's very grateful to have backup, and uh, I think there's a good reason for that. I think so too. All right. So let's return to the uh, battle map here. As uh, your Romulan friend, uh, Varessa, reports... Well, um, I'm happy to report that where we've emerged, if we are able to head on this heading here, and uh, I think I'm going to turn on uh, Fog of War here. Um, hopefully it'll work. Um, but if you will imagine sort of to the very bottom southeast, let me actually move, so past the micro nebulas, past the asteroid field, so down in that direction, um, there is um, basically something that she's about to explain. Um, we are actually nearby Starbase 906. Um, they're on the border, and if we're able to make it to there, I'm fairly certain the Jem'Hadar will back off. Um, unless something has drastically changed, it's one of those Starbases that's um, more of a firebase, and will more or less... Uh, give the Raziel time to escape. Uh, Lieutenant Droxine, set course for uh, the Starbase. Hi, Captain. Uh, Captain, if I may, should we not assist them? It appears the Jem'Hadar are attacking them. Why are we just fleeing the scene? We're not just fleeing the scene. The course should take us between those two ships as we're on our way we're going to distract them. 
Aye, aye, sir. All right. So it is at this point we are going to enter into turn order, and we're going to do this a little bit unusual, uh, specifically that normally I would be the one rolling all the NPCs. Uh, but what I would say is um, the Raziel should have a macro available to the players uh, right about now. So anytime uh, you guys want the Raziel to do something, um, I'm going to have one of you guys push the button rather than me do it. And the reason for that is because you guys can actually use your momentum to give the Raziel extra dice. So that's sort of a sort of a benefit for you all. Um, but uh, as turn orders go, it is going to go between player, enemy, player, enemy. Um, so it does start with the players. So how would you like the Bastet to open up? Um, if you're confused or you need a little bit of help uh, with Starship Combat, I did try and throw in uh, combat references, both for uh, movement, for each sort of helms or each sort of station on the bridge uh, to just give you a basic idea of what you can do in Starship Combat. I think I'd like to start off with the rally action. Okay. So the rally action is one that you're basically inspiring the crew. And this is going to be a presence command at a difficulty of zero. All right, let me get over here. I don't know, would perhaps diplomacy work as a focus? Mm, no, Galactic, uh... Galactic history? Well, I mean, if you could figure out a way to inspire someone with history, sure. History professors have been trying to do that for years. So you're, you're not going to yeah. figure that out now. No, I'm not. Can, uh, I, I'm, can I aid him with my inspiration focus? <laughs> I mean, cool if you want to literally interrupt uh, Lieutenant Avacy as he's giving the speech and be like, so about that. No, no, I'll put on music again. Just some, some inspiring, like... I'm going to roll with no focus then. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I mean, hey, you know, you got one success, so that's one momentum. So maybe not your most inspiring speech, but uh, I mean, you feel a little bit better. The The crew seems to be responding a little bit better. Hey, we are facing down two Jem'Hadar battleships, so that's understandable. Right. All right, so that is going to be your turn. And uh, the yellow-dotted Jem'Hadar battleship is coming up next. And I think what they're going to do is they're going to attempt to do a scan for weakness on the Raziel. Uh, I'm not going to spend any threat here, so let's see what happens. Uh, yes, they actually succeed because they're at close range. Uh, what happens is uh, Varissa reports... Um, sir, they are locking quite a large number of weapons on the Raziel's, um, impulse engines. It looks like they're trying to cripple her for some reason. Let's try and draw their attention before they can do that. All right. So, uh, we now go back to the quote-unquote good guys. Um, if you guys want the Raziel to act, you can. Otherwise, it could be someone on the best set again. Um, based on our sensor scans of the Raziel, is it uh, actually warp capable still? Yes. So it actually hasn't taken a whole lot of damage. Uh, apparently the pirate, uh, the pirate, the pilot that they have uh, actually knows their stuff. So they've taken a few glancing blows, but nothing serious. Okay. Uh, we could try to put some distance between them and the Jem'Hadar to make potential ensuing attacks more difficult or the like. Maybe put them out of weapons range using warp. Sounds reasonable. Okay. So uh, a little bit about the uh, asteroid fields and the nebula. So you can go through the asteroid field. Um, like you can just sort of go right through it. The caveat to that is, is it does involve a difficulty of three check 
to not hit anything as you're traversing the asteroid fields. Um, if you don't pass the difficulty three, um, you're going to take three stress of or three challenge dice worth of damage to your shields. Um, the other thing that happens is if you go into a nebula, um, and I'm going to test this with the Raziel to see if it works for the stream. Um, but you sort of see how the Raziel uh, is now in a nebula and they can only see in the nebula. Mm -hmm. That's sort of an intended effect is that certain nebulas are sensor dampening. Others, you know, mess with shields or mess with power, but the nebula closest to you are definitely sensor dampening. We could just have her take evasive actions. I mean, that is a, that is something you could do, but it does mean that they stay in the same place. I I encourage us to let the Raziel take evasive action and put distance between them and the Jem'Hadar. Or, I mean, she could use impulse power and just move into that nebula. Not that I'm looking at the list of things you can do in combat, and mm. specifically the Helm's <laughs> actions. That would put her out of their weapons uh, arc, so. I think we should get it moving. Yeah. All right. So, uh, who wants to do the honors of uh, hitting the button for the Raziel? All right, so bad news, unfortunately. The Raziel didn't roll even a single success. So <laughs> what happens is uh, they try to angle their way towards getting towards the nebula, but uh, one of the Gemini battleships sort of fires across their bow and causes it to divert. So unfortunately, they do lose one power for the attempt, uh, but they are unable to actually go uh, any closer to the nebula for their efforts. All right, so up next, uh, it's going to be the, and just give me one second, Helm is green. So up next is going to be the pink dotted Jem'Hadar battleship, and they too are going to attempt a scan for weakness. And they succeed as well. Uh, it is at this point that uh, Barissa reports, um, so if we're going to do anything, um, it needs to be now. Agreed. could scan for weaknesses, spend to momentum or threat, and then attack. Sir, if I may, doesn't this ship separate into three sections for this exact situation? No, we can never do that. Never do that. We've not even tested that system. I don't want to risk it unless we absolutely need to in a combat situation. Scanning for weakness, sir. Okay. If that's what you want me to do. It is. All right, excellent. Uh, that is a, so where's my reference sheet? Help me, someone answer. Should be a control, control science. Yeah. Uh, difficulty of two because you are at medium range, um, but the best step will assist you with a sensor security. I got the. I do have sensor operations. Okay. All right, now my question is, uh, which of the two Geminar battleships are you scanning? Uh, the other one. The yellow one. Okay. Is that okay, Captain? That would be my recommendation. <clears throat> wow, that is that is four successes. So you're up to uh, three momentum by my count. Yeah, you get a solid lock on one of the uh, rear engine blocks of the Geminar battleship. Um, yeah, I've got a, uh, a lock on their rear engine. If we fire now, we can probably disable them. I look really excited about that. Who put the doctor on the bridge right. for combat? If we can, um, if we can keep the momentum, um, I could, I could fire on the ship from the tactical console. Well, let me ask, because uh, I think Tavarin, you're the pseudo tactical person. I do um, have augmented ability control and a free momentum every time I use a bridge station. So. Oh, uh, okay. Hmm. Well, what I was going to ask is, do you have quick to action? No. Okay. That. So we would have to spend two momentum to maintain. Yeah, you would have to spend the two momentum to retain the initiative here. I mean, personally, I think that's worth it out of character. In character, I think it's a really good idea. <laughs> so I'm good with spending uh, the two momentum to go again. Yeah. 
or it would have to be one momentum and one threat. No, we no, have. We just got two. Extra we just momentum. got two. Oh, we just got two. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. yeah. so that would put us down to one. Yeah. Yep. yep. And then when you use the 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 bridge station, you get a free momentum to spend. If I succeed at the task, yeah. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Control security for yeah, the uh, control phaser security. Attack. Uh, control and, security, and then the ship is doing weapons security. Okay. Uh, difficulty of two. Spend spend that momentum so that you can roll for more momentum afterwards. Yep. Untap potential. Oh, I forgot to roll mine. Can I roll my untap? Yeah. Potential? Go ahead and roll yours. The captain also forgot to roll his. Well, it's only when you buy the uh, only that's when right. you buy momentum. That's right. So well, that's a. Oh, that's Kate, a are you uh you didn't oh, buy I with did, momentum? I'm sorry. So. Yeah. My bad. My That's bad. okay. We would have given him threats. So, mm-hmm. yeah, hey, best at with another success. And if I chose to use spread on the phasers, would that hit both battleships? Um, or rather no, area. but if you use spread, it'll basically do an attack and a half where it'll do half the damage again. Sorry, I actually meant area. Ah, Are they no. within range? No, no, unfortunately, they would have to be in close range of each other, and they are currently at medium from each other. Okay. Uh, then spread on the yellow battleship. I'll buy one extra die. Okay. Uh, tactical systems focus. Mm-hmm. Uh, augmented ability control for one free success. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so that is a grand total of five successes, which means you get three momentum. And nice. uh, because you ended up scanning for weakness, um, you're going to actually do one challenge dice more uh, than you initially would make. Um, so I believe the Bastet, let me pull up the sheet real quick. What we call uh, eight, I think it's her phaser array. Yeah, you're, you should be at eight as a base. So you're looking at uh, nine challenge dice here and you already have the piercing two quality. So every effect is going to ignore two resistance and you still have the versatile two quality, which means you have essentially two free momentum to um, spend on whatever effects or rerolls you might want. Oh my and, God. and that would be three with my uh, all fingers and thumbs talent. So Even better. Is this, oh, this how it wow. works? Starship? Holy crap. Wow. <laughs> we are that, kind of well. that is impressive. Um, um, yeah. Uh, what I'm going to say there is uh, if I'm just trying to think if you if you spend the two momentum to basically up the damage to 13, I think you literally carve through their shields like a hot knife through butter. Be my guest. Okay. So uh, what happens is uh, Tavarin, you sort of piggyback on Lieutenant Cater's work and you take the opportunity to line up a careful shot and we sort of see the Bastet kind of swooping into view and you sort of see that orange light begin to coalesce between two spots on the saucer section and it the two points meet and a masterfully aimed orange lance flies out towards the Geminar battleship, impacting it right in the rear quarter. And not only does it immediately knock out the shields completely like it entirely destabilizes uh, the Geminar battleship to the point that uh, you inflict not just two breaches, but you inflict uh, four breaches in one shot with the phasers, which I think is actually the record for a phaser shot in my game. So well done there. Nice. Nice. Well, did we generate any momentum on that? Uh, three. And uh, Thavarin will swivel in his chair for a moment towards the Lieutenant Alexio. You see, Lieutenant, this is why I'm both the Chief Engineer and the Chief Tactical Officer. De facto, of course. Well, I'll always have that time I modulated the shields very well. <laughs> we, we compliment each other. <laughs> That's what the Starfleet is all about. All right. So, uh, Yellow's actually going to lose a bunch of turns here because it just got Wombo comboed. Uh, so, I think Pink Dot is going to open fire on the Raziel. 
And I'm going to say that the Raziel is, um, it's still, well, no, I guess you, you did move its helm action. So it no longer has evasive action. Um, so for the Jem'Hadar battleship, I'm going to spend one threat to give them an additional die. And it's a good thing I did because otherwise they wouldn't have hit. So, uh, we are going to do a little bit of damage to the Raziel. Uh, let's see. Actually, no, I'm reading that wrong. Uh, the first threat roll was an 18, so no, they missed completely. So yeah, the pink fires out with, uh, Polaron phase cannons, uh, which would have torn through the Raziel, but, uh, the Raziel masterfully dodges out of the way. We now return to the, uh, quote-unquote, good side. Uh, does the Bastet want to go, or does the Raziel want to go? Captain, recommend we put ourselves between the Raziel and the Jem'Hadar. Agreed. Bring us in closer. I'm going to comment, right. with, a, with a helmsman like they've got on that ship, I don't know if that's necessary. Uh, I would like to take a impulse action on our end. Uh, okay. So that's going to be your uh, controlling con. Uh, difficulty of zero, assisted by the ship's engines con. Uh, I will spend a momentum for an extra dice so that I can... Uh, and uh, I have helm operations as a focus. That would definitely apply. Oof. All right, there's your one. Uh, go ahead and roll your untapped potential there. And then if someone can get the ship's engines con real quick. Okay. Hey, I get my threat Perfect. back. And then I move the ship to here. Okay. Another one. Very nice. So uh, that actually gets you one momentum. And uh, yeah, you swoop the Bastet in, moving into close range of uh, the paint dotted battleship and the Raziel as well. And with that, uh, it is going to go back to the pink dot because yellow dot is still floundering after that alpha strike. Uh, I believe. Does Raziel get a turn? Or no, uh, we used to give our we, turn to Raziel, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the Geminar battleship is actually going to fire again, but this time they, I think they're still going to go for the Raziel here. I think they're they see the Raziel as a threat for some reason, like they're they're deliberately trying to ignore you, even though you just alpha strike their fellow. Like obviously you're the bigger threat, but. For some reason, they're they're targeting the Raziel again. Uh, this I, time, I, I have a question. I have an answer. Um, I have the talent uh, flyby, which mm -hmm. in theory means that if I spend momentum to retain us the um, the turn, mm -hmm. then it only costs. It doesn't increase the difficulty of the second task. What I would say, though, unless I'm misremembering, you can only retain the initiative once per round, and you've already retained the initiative. Are we in the same round? Because in theory, then everyone's already gone. Well, like, no, no, no. So the, everybody hasn't gone yet. Like, everybody has actions equal to their scale. Right. So, okay. yeah, it's the okay. same round still. I got you. Yeah, you know, it's it's been a while. Actually, I think for some of you, this is kind of your first sort of in-depth combat, so I don't mind explaining. But yeah, uh, I think the Gemini battleship. I'm going to spend three threat, so they're going to get uh, two additional dice. And wow, wow, that is that is a lot of dice. All right, uh, I think I actually get threat back on that. Uh, so let's see, they are going to hit the Raziel for how many effects? That's enough effects. Um, oh, I have to roll two more challenge dice because they had scan for weakness. Okay, let's just add three more. So, uh, what we see is the battleship, you know, its first shots completely miss the Raziel, but, uh, this time they do open fire and the purple blast slam into the Raziel's shields, dealing a significant amount of damage um, to the shields. But also, um, let's see what I hit in terms of, yep, I figured that was going to be the case, uh, hitting the port nacelle 
uh, causing it to immediately wink out and otherwise uh, become unpowered. Um, so the Raziel's immediately going to lose the power, and uh, their engines are temporarily downed, but that can be cleared with a minor action. Captain, the Raziel's taking a direct sit, hit to its port to sell. Their engines are down. Keep us, try and keep us between them and the battleship. Aye, sir. All right. So we come back to the ally turn. Uh, who do we want to act at this point? I think it would probably be a good idea for the Raziel to try and repair that breach. Hmm? Okay. So it is just a minor to get the engines back up and running, but what are you doing for the Raziel's full action? Uh, should she uh, try and move again? We should probably try and get her moving towards the star base as well. Okay. Am I rolling? Now, before you hit the roll button, what I would say is that this is a difficulty of one now because the helm has already been used on the Raziel's turn. Can I spend a momentum? Yeah, if you want to give them an additional die. Thank you. You guys ready? Yep, mm. let's do it. Cross. And that's three successes, so you guys actually get two momentum back for your trouble. And yeah, uh, you can move the Raziel uh, anywhere within, I believe it is six, if I remember my own rules. Yes, you can move it within anywhere within six hexes. Put it inside the nebula. Okay, so you, you want to move it, nebula. like, right Straight there. Straight up to the nebula. Okay. Like, I'm going to send the, the like sensor readings to their ship and be like, you guys can hide inside the nebula. I'll like, send, like, a shortwave beat band with, like, that instruction. Without asking the captain, of course, by the way. I figured. God damn it. <laughs> now, actually, looking at the distances, uh, do you want to send them to the southmost nebula or the eastern nebula? Because you could send them to either. The galactic eastern. Okay. <laughs> so, um, is, this, is the southmost nebula closer in the direction of the starbase, though? I mean, technically, they're all within the same distances. Okay. Sure. Um, it's just sort of this, a split Just wanted path. to make sure. All right. All right. All right. Well, then, that's all the same to me. All right. So the Raziel dives into the nebula. And uh, as it does so, uh, you do lose sensor readings of the Raziel. Uh, as it falls into the nebula, you are no longer getting communications or sensor readings from the Raziel. But, I mean, that's sort of good news as... Uh, Veressa reports, she says, Well, um, good news. Um, if we can't see them, neither can the Jem'Hada. Which, um, speaking of, our, um, friend that, uh, Tavarin hit, I don't think they're happy with us. I wouldn't imagine they're not happy with anybody. They're the Jem'Hadar. No, fair point. And <laughs> sure. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just laughing in character. Like, <laughs> mm. All right, so the uh, Jem'Hadar yellow dot is finally going to get to go here. And um, yeah, they're kind of mad at you. Just a little bit mad at you. What? So I'm going to spend the three thread I earned just a moment ago to once again give them full dice here. Didn't what? need to do it, but I did anyway. And this time... Uh, let's see. So that is one, two, three. Uh, so that is going to tear through your resistance because I believe you have six resistance. Uh, so you're going to take eight damage to your shield and you're going to suffer a breach to your weapons. So note that on the sheet if you would be so kind. Thanks. So the, as uh, as you're doing that, uh, the battleship opens fire on the Bastet. Um, your shields take the brunt of it, and uh, Mir reports, uh, Sir, we're we're still at uh, about 60% shields, but uh, I'd really, really would like it if we didn't take more hits like that. Agreed. Let's follow the Raziel, try and get away from them. So I recommend we go into the other nebula, just so that we don't get too close. Agreed. Set course for the uh, southern Nebula. Galactic Southeast. 
So it is at this point that uh, it is either the Raziel's turn or the Bastet's turn. But what I'm going to say is because the Raziel is in a nebula, um, if you guys want the Raziel to act, it has one more action. Um, it's something that I'm going to do because you can't communicate with them right now. I think we should run. <laughs> I think we should probably move. Uh, okay. We can spend the miner to clear that breach to the weapons, yeah, and then... Well, it doesn't uh, clear be the breach, it just gets the, the effects of the breach away. Right. It's only one that's not affecting us right now, is it? Like, mechanically speaking? I mean, technically the weapons are offline right now, but it's just a minor action to restore them. I mean, here's the thing, we can sit here for a bit at uh, evasive action, because I'm really good at them. Here's my question. Do mm -hmm. we want to finish this fight? Like, we threw a punch, we hit first, they they punch back. Are we finishing the fight, or are we no, running away we now? We should run. Okay. We should probably run. Yeah. Well, what I would say is that you actually can't do another helm action here. Um, <clears throat> simply because, at this point, you've already done it twice. And to do it a third time... No, we've only done one. Uh, that, the uh, the uh, other the other the Raziel did twice. Oh, it's the Raziel yeah. that did twice. Okay, no, 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 you're right. So it would be more difficult, but you could do a move action. Yes, Captain, if I may, if we're intervening in this timeline, then that battleship could destroy any number of Federation ships. It's nearly crippled. I would like to whisper into the captain's mind with my. Oh, full spread. <laughs> I hate that so much. <laughs> Let's see what we can do to that one that we've already crippled. Oh. Open fire on it. Let's go. Okay. So uh, actually, there is no increase in difficulty here because you have a security score of four, uh, which means you actually have two tactical stations. Now, the only caveat to that is it cannot be Tavarin for this role. It does have to be Alexio for this role. All right. Well, I can I can see what, what I can do here. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, is it going to be a control security? Yep, it's going to be a control security assisted by the ship's weapon security. Now, it does matter what weapon you use here. Um, of course, they have no shields, uh, so you know any damage you do to them is automatically going to cause at least one breach. But if you fire phasers, I check the ranges, you are in range with phasers, um, so that would just be a difficulty too. But if you really want to be fancy and fire quantums, uh, that would give me a threat, but the difficulty would be a four. But if you hit with quantums... There's not going to be a battleship left. All right. So I will do quantums if the group is fine with that. Love it. I would, I would spend my determination okay. off of the value. Oh, He's like, no. Whatever you got to do to survive. Okay. Um, to get the two free successes. So it's still a difficulty of four, right? Correct. Okay. Um, could I also spend two momentum for another die you could yeah are we able to assist on this action uh i'm gonna say not in this instance no yeah starship combat's one of those things where i have to be very cognizant of assists because it can break very easily absolutely I think assist is actually a main action in special yeah. combat, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it it's it's a uh, command thing oh. as well. Well, those are just Ooh, but it actually bought an extra. It actually bought an extra die, so right. just for RP. Then I'm gonna shout and call upon one of my values. Trust the sensors, not your eyes. I love it. And yeah. Uh, all, all right. So, so that's. That's five. Uh, we five. need the ship's weapon five. security. Oh, ship's weapon security. Sorry, I'm, I'm on it. Oh, damn. Nice. Damn. All right, you're up to damn. six successes, which means you actually get two momentum back for your trouble. And yeah, uh, quantums for you all. Uh, uh, the, uh, 
Hey, I get one. Damn. Nice. Uh, so quantums for you all, I believe, is a grand total of uh, eight challenge dice eight. here. All right. And uh, I would maybe recommend spending one momentum to re-roll those zeros. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All five yes. of them? Yes, please. So that's five more. Okay. Mm. That is more yes. than sufficient. <laughs> so as uh, the, the Bastet is dipping and diving uh, under fire from the paint Jem'Hadar battleship, Alexio, you line up the shot, and it's almost like the... I, I hesitate to use a Star Wars reference in a Trek game, but you know that sort of trench run where Luke fires the glorified torpedoes and then sort of peels away? Sort of that same sort of action where the Bastet launches a volley of quantums uh, at the Yellow Gem at our battleship, and Droxine pulls the Bastet away, and the uh, bright blue-hued projectiles slam into the battleship uh the first one hits completely just piercing a hole right through the starboard side of the battleship then the second one hits uh causing the entire engine block to explode and then the third one hits about midships and the entire battleship detonates in a fiery explosion so there is there is no more gem in our battleship yellow all right, but for the record, the next time I suggest messing with the timeline, I better not hear a peep from any of you. You're free to keep the titles, Lieutenant Tavarin. Uh, I well, will suffice with the glory. Uh, well, if you want to use a cudgel, that's fine. An engineer uses a scalpel. That's actually a doctor, but it, it's a scalpel. <clears throat> I got that reference. Hmm. <laughs> All right. So at this point, uh, I think the only people... No, I guess the battleship still has some actions. Um, so I think what the battleship's going to do is... Uh, I'm just going to roll to see if it succeeds on something. It more than succeeds. So... Yikes. What happens is the battleship is actually going to spend a little bit of power here. And it is going to do a micro warp jump to enter right into the nebula next to the Raziel. And then uh, on the Raziel's turn, again, you all don't know what's going on in the nebula, but I think the Raziel is oh. going to open fire. Um, now, of course, you can't give it momentum because this is an NPC-only action, but uh, let's see how the Raziel does. You never know. Maybe, maybe the, Raziel, the Raziel does good work. Uh, yes, actually, the Raziel does. So even though you can't see it, maybe if you will imagine for a moment uh, that the quote unquote camera shifts to the interior of the nebula as the Jem'Hadar battleship swoops into the nebula out of warp, the Raziel fires out its own little laser scalpels, as Tavarin put it, and actually does uh, a little bit of damage to the uh, Jem'Hadar battleship. Uh, not enough to do uh, anything major, but, uh, you know, still enough to cause a single breach, which is uh, pretty nice, all things considered. Does it block my telepathy? Uh, no, you actually still can do telepathy, uh, so as I'm can uh, Relore, if need be. Trying to read the mind of the crew as quickly as I can to just get an idea of what's happening. It may all be flashy. I don't know. You can give, obviously give me whatever you feel is, is fair, but I will relay that to the captain. Okay. Um, so they're back. God. Yeah. So it is at this point that we're going to set the new round at this point. That was round one, everybody. We're now on to round <laughs> two. And yeah, uh, it is going to be the allies' turn at this point. So do you want the Raziel to go again, or would you like the Bastet to go? And I guess I should reset your dots as well. Let me do that. There you go. That's a really cool way to track that, by the way. Yeah, it's a, it, I'm glad I thought of it a long time it's ago, a because it's it saves my butt more often than not. That's really smart. I think right. we should probably go... Okay. 
uh, set a pursuit course. Aye, sir. All right, so impulse, I'm guessing. Yeah, I don't think we have any other option. Okay. <laughs> so that's going to be a control con, difficulty zero, uh, assisted by the ship's engines con. I will spend a momentum so that I can roll for momentum. Okay. Uh, and I have helm operations, which will remain a focus. Most definitely is a focus. Uh, and... Bam. That is already three successes before the ship rolls. Nothing on my untapped potential. All right. And it was engines con? Correct. Nice roll. All right. So three successes means you're up to five momentum total. And yeah, uh, it's getting a little bit crowded in that nebula, but uh, where do you want to go? Maybe about there? Uh, yeah. Okay. So you're all right on top of one another, which is kind of amusing to me. So the Bastet sort of screams into the nebula, uh, diving in between the battleship and the Raziel. And as you do, the Jem'Hadar battleship is going to kind of once again um, ignore uh, the Bastet. And at this point, uh, Relor is kind of gonna shout out to everyone. I, I, I think I've got a bead on the um the the Vorda that's commanding them. There's something that the Raziel has that they really, really don't want them getting away with. Captain, request permission to open fire on the Gemidar. Do it. Let's see if you have the same skill as you showed previously. All right, so uh, I understand you guys hey, are retaining the initiative. Hey, hey, if I if I do that, uh, it doesn't increase the difficulty because I did a. I mean, if I do the momentum spend, I mean, because mm -hmm. I have the the flyby talent, which will oh. make it not increase the difficulty of whatever action you take because I took a. Yeah, got it. Okay. All right. In that case. Um... I'm going to tap my value, dangerously competitive, because I want to show up uh, Alexio. Mm -hmm. And I will also buy an extra die using two momentum. Okay. Along with my augmented ability control, if that's all right. Yeah. So let's break down the difficulty here. So it was going to be a difficulty two as a base. Uh, you are at close range using phasers, so that goes up to difficulty three. Um, you're firing from within the nebula, which is dampening your sensors. So that goes up to difficulty of four. Um, it was going to be a difficulty of five, but since you have Droxine's flyby talent, it stays a difficulty of four. Uh, so, and then difficulty three because of augmented, or I guess that's one free success, not a lower. Yeah, difficulty. correct. Okay. So control and security, 3D20. Focus. All right. Well, that is already uh, six successes by my count. Let's get a weapon security from the ship. On it. Yes. All right. Seven successes. Very oh, impressive. Good at rolling for the best stat. And uh, I believe you're now up to six momentum, I believe. Uh, don't forget to roll your untapped potential. You could have floating momentum here. I should have three because of... Uh... And I give you a threat, of course. Nice. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, go ahead and roll me your phaser damage. Let's see how well you do. That's eight. Eight. Yep. Okay. Sure. So you don't have the piercing two this time, but you do have uh, three floating momentum to spend on things like piercing two <laughs> as a flat thing. Like you wouldn't get the effect piercing two, but you could reduce the resistance by two for each momentum spent. Uh, don't don't our phasers have versatile? Too? That's where two of those come from. Oh, so one of them is from yeah. my talent, and two are from the versatile too. Cool, cool. Um, I would spend all three on piercing. Okay. And I'm debating spending more on extra damage here. I would say yes, personally. Like go big or go home. As uh, law states, and in for a penny, in for a pound. Let's get after it. Yeah, I think. Uh, if it's all right with everyone, I'd spend 
I guess, three for extra damage, which would bring us up to 11. I feel like in this in this particular group, we can stop asking each other if we're allowed to spend momentum and just speak up if you feel like somebody shouldn't. Because the group is always like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah do it. it. Make it happen. Let's go weird. I mean, you want to blow up the other ship? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> hey, we're pretty good at generating momentum as it is. As it turns out. So, and... Tavarin, if I might provide a bit of devil's insight here, you give me those three momentum. Remember that alpha strike you did earlier? You can repeat it. Question for you. Would the devastating attack momentum spend here apply? Uh, if I spent two momentum, would that uh, create another breach? Let me check. That could matter. Uh, let's see. Devastating. Uh, da, 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 da. Did they actually get rid of it in the Klingon revamp of the rules? I think they did. Oh. What's the talent? No, it's a, it's a momentum spend. You used to be able oh. to confer the um devastating attack but it looks like yeah let me and i'll do this during break when we do break i'll throw in the combat momentum spends as a handout yeah it looks like they got rid of the uh devastating momentum spend which is interesting but no i mean as i said if you want to give me those three momentum you have left over yeah you alpha strike this geminar battlecruiser again or battleship again I'm I'm gonna give it to you if unless anyone objects. Do it. All okay. right. So of course, of course Tavarin being I object again... because you're showing me up, but I, <laughs> as a player, as a player, I object. Yeah, I mean, I object. I object because you're ruining my timeline as a <laughs> as the character. But in 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 the play as a player, go ahead. So what's going to happen is uh, the Bastet swooping through the nebula, the swirling purple and blue gases around it. Um, you line up a shot, Tavarin, using like almost visual sort of guidelines, like because sensors aren't providing you a good sensor lock. So you just sort of feel your way to a correct target lock. And when you fire out, you once again seem to have found a weakness in these battleships design, um, almost like the Valiant did when they encountered this battleship, where you open fire on the engine block and cause a significant number of breaches uh, along the hull and engine block to open up, uh, which means that the battleship is actually out of commission for uh, four rounds. So the Raziel and the Bastet, uh, between the two of you, you guys can act four times before the battleship moves again. Okay, so the player in me is like, kill them. The Starfleet officer in me is like, all right, they're 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 disabled, sir. We should leave. Mm. Hey. Alexio is actually just clapping. Alexio is not even mad. That was just beautiful. That was, that was, that was really good. Thank you, Lieutenant. Would you like to finish them off? <laughs> uh, it seems a little cruel, doesn't it? But I'll look over to the captain. They're Jemadar. Weren't, yeah, weren't you the one worried that they were going to fly away and like do a bunch of more damage? Oh, that was the barn. This one is disabled. We don't have a second one trailing us now. Between us and the Raziel, let's try and set course, get further away from it now. Um, I mean, I think we've seen that Captain Stevens of the Raziel is not the type to shy from a fight, so uh, my bet would be that he would just shoot at them. <laughs> Let's see what the Raziel does first. Okay. So the Raziel is actually going to uh, do a little bit of an interesting thing here. Uh, by that, I mean they are going to open fire on the battleship. Uh, yeah. So let me ask this. Uh, do you think it is an appropriate threat-giving event for them to get give me three threats so they have two additional dice? Yes, 100%. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, in that instance, I want one of you to roll the Raziel. And you I, know what? I, We're going to pick on somebody. Alexio, <laughs> I'd like you to be the one to push the button here. Excellent. Okay. All right. So, Brian's got good luck with all Brian. What, what button, button am I pushing? You have to have pull it from the macros. Yeah, there's a uh, macro button for the uh, Raziel. 
Uh, you just click it, and it'll handle everything for you. Right next to the gear, to the left, three little lines. Oh, I see. Click on that. Cool. All right. All right, and it is a good thing you did spend that threat, because with that... <laughs> Uh, it's, it's a pitiful phaser shot. Like it's nothing compared to the one Tavarin's been firing off, but it does enough that when the Rezeal's phasers impact the Jem'Hadar battleship, um, it goes up in what is essentially a, not a puff of smoke, but a series of cascading explosions that sends debris, uh, bouncing off your shields harmlessly, but the battleship is no more. And with that, we are out of initiative order at this point. Captain, nice I recommend job, we... everybody! Captain, I recommend we go to warp and get out of here before they piece together our... Uh, what, what do I want? Location? No, our, our uh, transponder... Uh, codes because I don't think anyone's bothered to change them. We're still pinging as the USS Bastet Stardate, whatever the heck Stardate we're from. Agreed. Get us out of here. Ah, uh, law. I don't have confetti enabled on this view. Uh, I'll refund that in a second. But yeah, uh, what I would say is as you all attempt to spool up the warp engines and get out of here, um, what happens is where Lore says, um, Sir, the nebula's messing with our warp engines. We're going to have to leave the the nebula to get out of here. But um, maybe we have a bigger problem on our hands. And I can confirm be... the engine readings, but... Um, well, you know, I'm, you know, telepath. Kind of what I do. Full, full beta zoid. Beta Z. Do, do, do... Um, I, I'll just say it. Um, the captain is very eager to learn what the hell a Prometheus class is. That that sounds like Captain Stevens, sir. Steven Stevens, I tell you, he's always trying to make up for that terrible name. Captain. With your permission, I would like to run a scan. For what purpose? And when do we start? I'd like to convince this Captain Stevens that he's stumbled onto a Starfleet intelligence vessel and he needs to delete any any knowledge of of, of what he's come across. Do it. That's a great idea. <laughs> so I'll turn to Lieutenant Verissa and I'll be like, Lieutenant Verissa, could you do a calm to the captain's private quarters, mocking me up as uh, as that uh, creepy silhouette Starfleet intelligence uses? Um, yes, I might recommend you use a black uniform. Or a white uniform. They seem to like those colors. Uh, yes, understood. And, um, I'll... We don't have any momentum, otherwise I could just do, like, a quick... quick I mean, you could just give me a threat. Just give him a threat. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just give you the threat for a, a quick change into a, uh, a, a, you know, creepy old man... <laughs> in a black uniform. Okay. So yeah, uh, what is it you're gonna say specifically? Because I'm curious. Yeah, be uh, Captain Stevens. This is a classified Federation vessel running under the purview of Starfleet intelligence. Mm -hmm. We broke protocol when we saw you were under distress in order to save your vessel and your crew. However, it is imperative to the security of the galaxy and the, our victory in the Dominion War that you essentially forget that you ever saw us and delete any record that you came across this vessel. So I like what I hear, and what I'm going to say is that initially this was going to be an impossible task. <laughs> 
<laughs> but with the role playing, it is a possible task, not a probable, but a possible. Specifically because this is a difficulty five. Um, and for you, Alexio, this is going to be a presence command. So, well, I guess it could also be presence security here. Maybe that would be a better stat for you, but you still would have to get five successes. Now, it's not all bad. The uh, Bastet will assist you with a comms and a command, but you still would have to get five successes to pull this off successfully. And honestly, her comms command is not great. So, uh, My presence security is, is pretty good. I have a focus in deception. We just have no momentum, and I already used my determination. Mm -hmm. So if there's any assistance anyone can provide here, I would I would love that. Does the captain actually have the ability to transfer his determination to you? Yeah, the captain does have that ability. And could we consider that a direct task because he did ask the captain, and the captain ordered him to carry out this deception, as I recall? Yeah, I would say that would be fair. So yeah, obviously, if you want to give your determination and then assist with your own presence command, that could be something that happens. I will go ahead and do that. All right, cool. So I'll tap, um, I'll tap stay one step ahead of them. Okay. Where is my value? And um, I will roll presence security with a focus in deception. I think okay. you're probably going to have to spend for a third die as well. You should give him threat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And so yeah. then I will also give uh, give two threat for okay. for the third die. Would you I'm afraid say the I best that does not help? An applicable focus. I think you do have a C. I think you have one here. All right. Well, we're at three successes right now. We need to see two more. Oh All right. no! All right. Oh, that's 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 really that's really tough. Yeah. Uh, roll your untapped potential because you wait, actually wait. with the direct action does it get to reroll? Yes. Oh, you have advisor. Yes, I do. Okay, so I can reroll one, right? Correct, but it needs to be a crit. No pressure. <laughs> yeah. No uh... pressure. Uh, yeah, look. Nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> that is Just... clutch right there. That is very clutch. So what happens, and again, this is all sort of a, a text-based conversation, at least until you do that, uh, you know, visual sort of creepy dude in a uniform kind of a thing. Um, the message you get back is... Ah, another Starfleet intelligence operation in the area. Uh, we're going to pretend you didn't see us and we didn't see you. Uh, carry on, gentlemen. Get us out of here. That was incredible. I don't I don't remember the Raziel being an intelligence vessel. And yeah, what I would say as... You say that, Droxine. We're actually going to go and take our 10-minute uh, break. So we'll be back in about 10 minutes, stream. Stick around.
Oh, nope. Should turn off red alert. So oh, okay. welcome back, uh, everyone. If you're just tuning in, uh, basically what you missed in the first half was the, uh, well, actually one of the better examples of Starship combat out there, I think. Um, it was uh, quite a masterful display of both tactical acumen, uh, RNG, and uh, system mastery by the players. Also, uh, thank you for the resub there, Chubby Kobold. But yeah, uh, we're going to sort of cut to about five, ten minutes after the battle has settled. Uh, the Bastet is going to be cloaked up somewhere relatively safe nearby. And all of you on the Bastet are meeting in the conference room to discuss what just happened. So yeah, take it away. It's your meeting. First off, that was Awesome. When you with the quantum torpedo and you over there with the laser beams, like you should have been a surgeon. That was so cool. Nobody? Just me? Sorry. Captain? Uh, I need a, is a rundown of where we are. What, what do we know now that we have a minute to breathe? And uh, Tamarochka looks very pointedly at Droxine and says, Do you wish to be telling them or should I? You are muted, Brian, as is tradition. No, I just forgot to bring my, my boom mic down. Uh, you go right ahead. I mean, are you sure? I, I am dissenting a little bit of sarcasm there. No, I'm still trying to wrap my head around the fact that I just almost ceased to exist. Okay, um, I have thought on that, but I will break things down. So, um, based on what I know of timeline, based on what I've been able to glean in a uh, short time we are here, we are looking at something that does not make sense. Now, I mean, you all are familiar with Butterfly Effect, yes? Isn't that an ancient Earth movie? And uh, Relore actually cracks up laughing at that and goes, <laughs> no, 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 no. What you're thinking of is uh, it's an idiom where uh, what happens is is you kill a butterfly or you stop its wings from flapping. And then that causes some sort of a world war. It's it's a funny little earth saying. Hmm. Sounds completely improbable. It also sounds horrifying, not funny, but all right. And Tamarochka just sort of nods at Relore and says, Yes, well, basically, it is how it works with timeline, where you do somewhat an innocuous event, perhaps you turn left instead of right, and it causes massive chain of events that changes entire timeline. Now, what I'm seeing here, again, you know, we are not, we're not really science ship, all things considered, or at least temporal science. So, this is only guess. But something we did... At K7, whether it was simple act of pinging the fact that we were there, or the fact that we stole cloaking device, whatever case may be, we have caused butterfly effect to drastically affect Droxine's past. Now, what I would say is we are, apparently, objective observers because Droxine does not have memory of this event. So that creature we encountered, that, I hesitate to use dragon, that's 29th century individual. They seem to have been, what they've said is confirmed. Okay, but, uh, so the Raziel was not an a, a intelligence vessel. We shouldn't be this far into the Cardassian space. With that that hit they took to their port in a cell looked about right, but it should have happened in about two months and in a skirmish near the border, close to Deep Space Nine. Captain, if I may, I think we need more information before we make any kind of action in this time period. Is it possible that we could clandestinely acquire information from a starbase. Lieutenant Alexio, you are more than capable in the area of infiltration. I don't know if you might have a suggestion in that regard, but it seems like we're very much in the dark here. Well, is that... I suppose we could enter into a starbase 
in order to access the computer systems and, and get something of a history. But the Lieutenant Tamarochka would would uh, it sounds like you already have some level of of historical analysis happening. That is correct. I am mostly comparing what I was able to glean from uh, basic calm traffic between Razil and Bastet. You know the standard procedure to sync up libraries, etc., etc. I made sure that we did not share any of ours, but we at least got a gleaning of theirs. I have been down in temporal operations doing best to compare, yes. Mm. Well, I'm happy to make a trip to a, to a starbase, but... Uh... I do have to ask, Lieutenant Tamarichka, the, the, the implications of this. Even if we were to return to our own timeline, would it mean that there's another, there'd be another version of us out, out there living, living our lives? Well, for all we know, uh, the Dominion War could be lost, or Dominion War could still be going. Hell, for that matter, it could be case that Dominion War was won soul-handedly, that now Dominion is part of the Federation. Honestly, there is no way to tell unless we actually travel back to own time. For um, Now that it, I say that out loud, it also occurs to me that we all could all be dead. The Dominion could have wiped the Federation out. And none of those events would affect us on this ship. My understanding of objectiveness, yes. I thought Temporal 305 supposed that the universe had uh, uh, fail-safes in place that would fix that kind of thing on a quantum scale so that we would see it on a macro scale, I should say, so that we would see the timeline correct itself within a few generations. And uh, actually to probably everyone's surprise, like usually Mir kind of keeps to herself, or at least that's the vibe you guys have gotten from her thus far. Uh, Mir actually speaks up and says, um, I've been hesitant to say anything about this because, well, it's it's sort of a trill thing, but, and she sort of turns to Cater. Uh, Doctor, how well versed are you in trill physiology? Oh, extremely. Uh, I took Trill Physiology 506 at the Academy. I see. Then you are aware that as a Trill, we, or I, share the memories and experiences of my past lives, or the symbiote's past lives, I should All say. All the previous hosts, yes. Let's just say I don't think I'm completely objective here. It's... It's hard to explain. Um, Let me I obviously, if I oh, may, go ahead. You go. Are some of your memories, some of the existences that you've had, are they changing or forgetting things, or are they disappearing? I, I have some theories, but again, I interrupted you. Please continue. No, you're fine, Doctor. It's more like phantom memories. I know my history. My history hasn't changed. But it's also as if I have the memories of a different person. As something in... Something you didn't know before? Yeah, something I didn't know before. But it's it's not a concrete thing. And try as I might, I haven't been able to call these sort of feelings up at will. Um, It's almost like uh, deja vu. It just sort of happens. Would you be willing to let me link with your mind to a attempt to help you more consciously bring up some of these memories. Again, I wouldn't want to intrude by any means, but at your permission, Captain, I truly feel this could be helpful to all of us. If some of those memories that you have, uh, Lieutenant Mir, could maybe tell us what's changed, we could better prepare ourselves against the uncertainty of the future or the past. Sorry, I'm still a little confused on the details. If Lieutenant Mir, if you were agreeable to that, I think it could be a good idea. No, I I think at this point it's it's become rather clear that we need to trust each other implicitly and no, uh Lieutenant Cater, Lieutenant Relore, I, I would not mind either of you rooting around in my head right now. Captain, more immediately we have to 
take our ship out of the nebula, it's having a corrosive effect on the ablative armor. Agreed. Let's, when we're done here, bring us out of the nebula, start us back towards Federation space. So I'm going to jump into her brain. I How do I do that? So this is going to be, I think, a daring medicine. Hmm. And I'm going to set the difficulty at a five here. Of course you do. And I'm glad it's me making this check because I'm going to be giving you so much threat. Well, I Which believe you also still have use. determination. I do. I'm probably going to use it. Um, so I'm going to actually use a determination right away. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to use my value, uh, read minds, heal wounds. Okay. Uh, so liking, liking to use his telepathy to maybe under, better understand a, a patient's it hurts feelings even better than they can, you know, verbally express. Right. So I'm going to be, you know, doing like a meditative sort of thing, very almost like a Vulcan kind of like mind meld style without the actual mind meld, but mm -hmm. very like, you know, I took Vulcan 305 as well. So a lot of, a lot of good courses at the Academy. Yeah. So we, we sit down and um, I'd say you said it was a daring and a medicine. Correct. Okay. I do have the focus xenobiology. I don't know if that would, would help here. I mean, um, technically, the Trill symbiote is outside of Federation science because most of it is kept secret. So, yeah, I would give you xenobiology here. <clears throat> Boomski. Thank you, sir. All right, cool. And so medicine. Now, I don't know if it affects your decision at all, but you could have R'hllor help you here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we could do it together. That would be awesome. Can she assist me? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I love it. We're all together in a triangle. It's super cool. There's candles and everything. And I'm like concentrate listen to your feelings it's very star trekky um and i'm gonna give you two threat to get an extra die all right just because why not abacy why don't uh since you haven't done a whole lot of rolling why don't you roll for uh Rulor here uh she's okay. also going to be doing a daring medicine assist oh man I'm so nervous you said difficulty five, difficulty I, do have two, five. I, I have two successes already so we only need three out of all these dice mm -hmm. all right Would mental discipline, emergency oh medicine, or God. empathy really? count as a focus? I'll I think all up. of those would apply as a focus. And unfortunately, I think you <laughs> would have to get a crit to even consider doing a succeeded cost. All right. Yes, yeah, so that's not enough. So unfortunately, <laughs> between Cater and Relore. Uh, um, cautious science. That's not science. Yeah, Field medicine. medicine. What does no. field medicine do? Come on. Something. Field medicine won't help you, unfortunately. Telepath betazoid? I don't know. That was such a bad How you got here in the first place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All that buildup from Zaldo Zero. Let me throw this out there. Is there a value that in this situation you could conceivably challenge to re-roll those three dice by getting a new point of determination? That is an option, yes. Are you compromising one of those values in some way? Yes. Doing something that you yes. Usually, I yes, I am gonna. I'm actually gonna challenge. Trust the sensors, not your eyes. I'm trying to. That that whole idea is like I trust the medicine that I have, like like the tools at hand. Mm -hmm. I'm not using those tools. I'm going back to my betazoid like telepathy that I'm like more of a feeling emotional thing, which is you know I kind of steer clear of that. I do use it to help in medicine, but I always go back to like my tools. So I'm gonna challenge that because I'm like, it's not working, but it should be, because mom said it would. I hear my mom in my mind, like, trust your feelings, son. Yeah, it's, it's a whole I like your mom Obi-Wan. Yeah, I was yeah. just, I don't know why your mom's Obi-Wan. But uh, maybe yeah. also it's one of those things where you legitimately saw Tavarin <laughs> deliberately do a visual sort of shot and not use the sensors. So maybe that inspires you a little bit. I love it. So do I delete that now? Uh, yeah, you would delete that value. And at the end of the session, you need to put in a new value, preferably one along the same lines. Love it. Okay, um, so feelings. But yeah, you may re-roll those uh, three dice. Thank sweet baby Jesus. All right, cool. So that was just so bad. Uh, so that is going to be in a medicine. Yes. 3D20 with a focus. Please, for the love of God. Oh my lord! Okay. Endo, maybe at cost, right? 
I was going to say a cost, but then I saw that complication. So I, I, I think what's going to happen here is not only are you unable to glean anything, but you actually make things worse. Uh, specifically that as you're sort of rooting around in her head, uh, Laura has to stop you and go, Cater, no, 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 Cater, no, 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 can't, you can't go in there. I gotta find out what's going on. Like, listen, listen, I, I, I know you recently saw the law, that hollow novel. You, you can't be the law here. You, you gotta let it go, man. You gotta let it go. Too soon, ELH. <laughs> Too soon. Oh, that's classic. Sorry, guys. I think I broke one of her NPCs. But no, I mean, as you pull out, uh, phrasing, uh, as you, uh, as you remove yourself from her mind, um, Mir just sort of shakes her head and goes, well, um, I hope you got something because now it sort of feels even further away, unfortunately. I got nothing. Oof. I'm, I'm sorry. I haven't practice much with with my telepathy I thought I I'll go inform the captain I'm going to very dejectedly leave the room look back like with apologetic eyes and then walk out gotcha so um, don't forget is, to roll your untapped potential yeah I was going to say roll your untapped potential I could get more, uh, more momentum more threat you never know hey I get more threat nice so, uh, what I'm going to do here, because I think what I'm hearing from you all is that you're going to go check out the Starbase. Is that about correct? I believe uh, so. Captain, if we stay cloaked, I might be able to dance the ship around enough that we won't show up on their sensors in anything more than an after image. Uh, and that should let us uh, download their library without uh, revealing our presence. It is possible. The Klingon cloaking device is ancient, but if we run in low power mode, I could supplement uh, Lieutenant Druxine's efforts. Nonetheless, it would be possible to also take a shuttlecraft that might attract less attention. The decision is yours, of course, Captain. I think it may be the better bet to take a shuttlecraft. It Here, will. Let me do that. I think that's going to give you vision. Let me zoom oh, out. With... There you go. Utilizing the shuttlecraft, there's. Well, we'll be visible. We're not necessarily going to stick out as if we don't belong here. Now, what Is I would the... say, uh, not to pew pew that idea, but uh, I will point out these things on the map. So each of these yellow circles is actually a sensor array. So the moment any ship, even a cloaked one, flies into, well, I should say even a TOS cloaked one, you know, a regular contemporary cloak would probably be all right. But a TOS cloak, no way. Um, the moment you fly into one of those yellow areas, the sensors are going to be picked are going to pick it up and report back to the starbase. Now, in order to get the shuttle, um, you guys are actually on the wrong side of the asteroid field here. So you guys are actually still back over here. And let me actually just sort of remove that bit of dynamic lighting uh, just for a moment here. So let me move that to the map layer. There you go. So you should be able to see that the Raziel still has to kind of go up and around um, and that the Bastet has to more or less either cut across the asteroid field or follow in the Raziel's wake. Could I assist the helm with plotting a course to the asteroid field? Yeah, I would say you certainly may. I um, that to the captain as a possible idea. If I may, Captain, could we actually use the asteroid field to our advantage? 
if we roped a series of asteroids using tractor beams, we could project them through the sensor net and piggyback a shuttlecraft that is unpowered in the asteroid storm, making it look like just another piece of debris. With minor maneuvering thrusters to keep us safe, we might be able to just float harmlessly past the starbase and then, well, maybe rendezvous with the Bastet. I love this idea. <laughs> I suppose that that could be possible. There is one other consideration I have been thinking about with my research into temporal events. At this time, there is a Department of Temporal Investigations. We, I'm not sure if it would be a good idea to try and get a hold of them, to try and get in contact we are close to our own time period. We can make a report. Captain, if I may, you're assuming that the uh, local temporal affairs won't treat their timeline as the correct timeline, uh, meaning that they would just, well, I hesitate to use the word section 31 as a verb, but Back on the Raziel, we used to talk about getting Section 31, so. What, uh, what's this now? Well, so if, if the Temporal Affairs decides that our record of history isn't the correct one, they'll disappear the Bastet and us. Oh, no, I, I understand your implications, Lieutenant. I, I'm just wondering what, why the verb Section 31, what is that? I've never heard of that either. You know what? I, I genuinely, it was a thing that Captain Stevens said to in a, in a briefing once. We all just sort of picked it up as being disappeared. Uh, I, it was a contextual thing. I don't really know what it's a reference to. Verissa um, actually speaks up at that and goes, I'm, I'm sorry, Section 31, are you, are you sure that was something he said? Yeah. Then, yeah, it was like, a, it was like an in-joke, the whole... N no, actually, it might help explain some things. If he knew about Section 31, then he was an intelligence operative from day one, even in the correct timeline. Wait, well, if that's true, then the timeline might not be as messed up as we think it is. Exactly my point. But at the same time, knowledge about Section 31 is, well, sort of kept close to the chest. That is highly concerning. The only way he would know about it at this period of time is if he is a member of Section 31. And we just told him we were a Starfleet intelligence officer. Um, I guess I should back up and explain. Um, Section 31 is, well, was in our time, a very sort of black ops stain on the Federation's Starfleet intelligence. They more or less were the black hand of the Federation. Uh, the members of DS9 were able to dismantle them, but if we're dealing with a Section 31 operative and we just told them we exist, we might have just caused a bigger problem. I mean, in theory, it doesn't matter what we do in this timeline because this timeline is already wrong, right? The, the mistake happened in 2263, 68, whatever. Uh, and then in order to fix the timeline, we'd have to go back and fix that one. So in theory, anything we do from here is kind of a freebie, right? We're, it's not going to affect us. We still have to go back to 2268. Well, and this is Tamarochka. Tamarochka says, well, I would simply point out that if we are going to be using any sort of time travel knowledge or ability the Federation has at this point in time, we probably need to be in good graces or have way to sneak into Federation space. Because without that, well, let's just say we're more or less searching the, searching for a black star or other phenomenon we could use. But it is like needle in haystack, I believe is expression. Heard that one.
So if this is the case, as we suspect that they are, the captain is this section 31, I highly doubt the logs of us showing up have been erased as we asked. I suspect you're right, and I have to issue an apology. I'm sorry. I thought it was a clever trick to erase ourselves from the, this this point in history. I did. I should have guessed that this butterfly effect would have resulted in a terrible outcome like this. And uh, I think Relor is actually going to speak up of that and says, uh, "Alexia, you don't need to be so hard on yourself. It's." None of us could have predicted this. I, I think in the moment it was a it was a it was a good call. But you did a great job. You can only act based on what you know. And unfortunately, this is information we didn't have. In light of that, I do not believe sneaking into the proximity of this space station is the best choice that we have. What if we sent a probe to link up with Starbase 906's library and then loop back? Well, only problem with that is they would detect data transfer. That is all logged. Sure. But I, mean, I already know we're here. Well, yes, but in order to create interface, we have to provide access code. It isn't something where we can just have them beam their records to us and not have log of it. Well, as it happens, a uh, handsome young ensign on that ship has the law, has the, the access codes to uh, at least base level historical knowledge. And I'm an excellent record keeper. And then that... Say... Oh, go ahead, sorry. But what's to say with the changes that we're already witnessing here, that information hasn't changed as well. If we attempt to access that and your access codes are incorrect, that'll put an even bigger problem in our lap. But then we lose a probe and we leave. And uh, Varissa's going to speak up and says, actually, on that same sort of note, if your code is the same, you might have access to the Raziel's database. We could stop that problem being a problem. I mean, I'll only have an instance access, but yeah. Well, I mean, all we need is a, uh, what is the expression? Um, a way in, a foot in the door. Just full of sayings today, and I love it. Well, I, I wasn't an engineering officer, so I can't tell you what the the shield frequency was. Oh, uh, no, no, no. I would suggest that um, you let me handle this one. I'm, again, Starfleet Intelligence was my job before I transferred to the Bastet, so let's just say that this sort of thing is my bread and butter. There she goes again, dynamite. Dynamite. I, I skipped colloquials 201, so. <laughs> How many classes did you take at the academy, Doctor? So many. All of them. Is crazy. that why you look so old? Are, are you actually far older than all of us? I... Did you no, spend like eight years I, at the academy? It's not, it's not nice to talk about a person's age. I thought you would know that. That's. Oh, Andorians don't really care about that, nor do Benda, Benzites, so... Uh, nor are Danans. He looks really uncomfortable. He's like, let's just change the subject. Can we just change the subject? Doesn't matter how old I am. I'm old enough to be a doctor. Avasi kind of turns to stare out the windows of the conference room for a few moments before turning back to look to uh, Lieutenant Ruler. If we attempt this, and again, as I said, this does not work, what do you see being the consequences? And Relore looks at Barissa, and they share kind of a, a glance. 
And Relure answers, well, um, if Verissa isn't able to get into the Raziel or is sort of blocked or otherwise access denied, I hesitate to use this as an option, Captain, but I believe I have sufficient capabilities that I could potentially mess with the Captain's memory. But I would simply say, before anyone says it themselves, that would be a grave breach of Starfleet Protocol. I, at this point, I'm still considering that proceeding to Starbase and getting in touch with temporal investigations may be our best bet. Well, you are a captain. If this is what you wish to do, that is what we will do. I want to know everyone's opinion on that. Well, this will still affect all of us. Well, it's shocking coming from me, I know, but I'm wondering if you're not right, Captain, and it's maybe time to come clean. My attempts at, uh, at uh, obfuscating what's, what's happening with us, with the local authorities, seem to be, seem to be very hit or miss. I, I, I don't like saying it, but my confidence in my ability to, for lack of a better word, bullshit our way out of it is, has been a little shaken. I think going to the authorities of a timeline that we don't know is a, a greater risk than we should take. Uh, what we should do is get out of here, find somewhere else to enter Federation space, and... Uh, assess where we're at before we make any decisions about contacting the current Starfleet. With all due respect uh, to Lieutenant Alexio, whose performance has been absolutely exemplary, uh, don't, don't think just because the outcome has been poor that the actual attempt or the impetus behind it was, well, ill-considered. Nonetheless, Captain, uh, I think you're right. We probably should just go to Starfleet and explain the situation. If they're anything like the Federation from our own timeline, and it seems that they must be, it, it, it's the best course of action. All right. I would like to use my telepathy for mm -hmm. like surface level emotions. I want to mm -hmm. just get a read of the room. For right. all the NPCs, because I know where the PCs stand. I want to know where the NPCs stand. All right. Surface level, what are they leaning towards? Tamarochka is about to comment that uh, she is vehemently against uh, talking to Temporal. Uh, mm -hmm. Relore hasn't made up her mind yet. Uh, Verissa is almost about to say something she can't really put her finger on right yet. Like the thought is still forming. And Mirror is just withdrawn, like she's sort of checked out of the meeting at this point. I know. I don't even bother going to her brain. Just let her rest. Um, so, having been quiet for the first time in a while, Cotter is going to sit up straight. Captain, we can't go to the Federation. It's, it's, it's moronic to even think that that's a good idea. And I mean no disrespect, sir. I realize that may come across as disrespectful, but we don't even know where we really are based on this effect of the butterfly that was mentioned earlier. The Federation as, as we know it could be worse than the Borg. I mean, just because we ran across one ship doesn't mean that everything else is the same. I agree with, I, I agree with Lieutenant Droxin. We should leave this area as quickly as possible, find a safe location, enter Federation space, gather as much information as possible. And if at that point, Captain, it it comes to our purview of knowledge that that this Federation is safe to contact, then we do so. But 
to go in blindly knowing that we've affected the timeline seems moronic. I am in full agreement with Troxine and Cater on this one. I would, of course, follow your orders, Captain, but it would be with great objection noted in log if we decided to contact Temporal Investigations at this time. And uh, Verissa uh, finally figures out what she wants to say and says, Actually, I'm of the mind that there's a way we could spin it if we did contact Temporal Investigations. There is... Something known as the Temporal Prime Directive. I, I think we've mentioned it previously, but if we were to go to them and say that, well, by not interfering in their timeline, we would be violating our Temporal Prime Directive, or something along those lines. The It, it just occurred to me that perhaps we could use the Prime Directive in some way, shape, or form here, but... I suppose now that I say it out loud, it sounds worse than I intended. Because their temporal prime directive would direct them to retain, retain their timeline. Mm, yes. Mm, I apologize. I probably should have thought on that one a little bit more. And this is why I'm asking all of you before committing to a course. I I don't think that's the correct choice at this time now. I believe we should make our way for Federation space. I want to avoid the station here. I want to go in. I want to get what information we can. And then at that time, when we know more, when we're better informed of the time frame that we're in, then we can re-advise the choice. Brilliant conclusion, Captain. Thank you for listening to us. And I think R'hllor just sort of stands up without even being asked and says, I'll go ahead and lay in a course, Captain, to get us away from here. Please do. And with that, uh, I think we are actually going to call the session there. So yeah, what did you guys think? Better. That, yeah, that was good. Awesome. Yeah. I, there was combat. There was some social interaction. Everyone got a chance to shine. This guy, this guy over there, blew up his ship with a quantum torpedo. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and had that badass roll with the crit. Like, yeah, that was awesome. Hmm. Good stuff. And an excellent moment of character introspection for him as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Thanks. Um, yeah, no, it was it was a lot of fun. It was, I think it was. Um, uh, compared to the Matahari combats, I think this one went went uh, a little better. It was a little more dynamic. Mm -hmm. I think that we were um, um, there's a, there's some good back and forth mm -hmm. between us and the enemy. Mm -hmm. Once you have an objective and different terrain features, it completely changes the complexion of combat. Yes, yeah, definitely. Yes, it does. And yeah, that's sort of going to be my goal moving forward uh, with all my Star Trek games is I'm going to be trying to eliminate the, oh, there's a ship here, you need to disable it. Or, oh, there's a ship here, you need to do X, Y, Z. Um, yeah, it's it's something I'm going to work on. But I'm, I'm glad the sort of first foray really worked out. Um, as I said during break, the, the inspiration uh, is coming from Star Trek Armada, a, a very old RTS game of Star Trek. Um, which if you could figure out how to run it in this day and age, definitely do. It's a fun game. Um, Just, is it not on GOG? I don't think it is. When I looked earlier, it wasn't. But yeah, uh, so YouTube and Twitch, this is where uh, I'm going to end the stream and the recording. Uh, so Twitch and YouTube, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And we'll see you later. Bye stream. <laughs>